Terry, how are you? Hey, hey, it's good, it's good. We're, we're in the house, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Give me a snapshot of how things are going in the cruise house these days. You know, it's going really well. Um, it's We're going on probably eight weeks going of this. Uh, and, you know, I've done everything via Zoom you could probably do, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do understand that this is for, you know, it's for the good of the world. You know what I mean? And it, it's a hard time. I, but first of all, it sucks. I'll, I'll just be right straight on it's, it's not a good situation but you know when i look at the whole you know, whole, the whole thing of just where we are right now i look at it as a modern day passover you know what i mean and it's kind of like when you look at passover and what it's all meant you always like heard about it and you always like yeah i saw that but that's basically what this is uh everyone in passover years ago had to stay in their homes until the angel of death passed by. And literally that's, you know, that's what we're doing right now. Uh, and just in hopes of not only saving ourselves, but for other people who may be susceptible, uh, I think it's worth it. And I think it's a smart thing to do. And, but I am ready for it to be done. <laughs> Yeah, I know what you mean. I have spent my entire life waiting to be praised for sitting on the couch and watching Netflix. This is the best time. This is incredible. Uh, <laughs> I, but see, I'm a people person. I'm a hugger. Yeah. I'm a handshaker. I, even to the point where, you know, you do the one handshake thing with the arm over. I, I got all kind of techniques. Uh, I like really interacting with the, I mean, my thing about AGT and hosting it is that I get to be back there with the acts, you know what I mean? Right. And when they're happy, I hug them and the whole thing. And now this distancing thing is really hard for me. It, it is, it's because I'm just a hands-on type person where it's like, you know, I really want to connect and it's kind of hard, but I'm just finding new ways to really, you know, connect with people right now. So what we're going to talk about today is near and dear to my heart. I come from a family of teachers. My sister is currently a teacher in St. John's, Newfoundland, trying to do online classes with her students. Before we talk about uh, your project, just how, how is distance learning going in your house right now? You know, my son is doing all his work on a computer, um, and it's difficult. It, it is, because I can't help him, <laughs> you know? There's a lot of things that they, he's in high school, he's 14 years old. There's a lot of things I've just forgot. I, I'll be honest, it's like, where, who do you call? We, we're calling the customer service line, you know what I mean? Like, uh, how do I get the answer to this? I have no idea. Now, you can Google anything, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. I mean, but that wasn't around when I was a kid. But at the same time, there needs to be a, 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 a connect. You can't get rid of that connection. You can't get rid of someone actually showing you and talking to you or even just explaining concepts in a way that you would understand. Everybody understands differently. And um, so it's been a, a hard go because I, I haven't been able to be that guy who can who can do that for him. I mean, he's literally listening to, you know, other people who are Zooming with him and it's hard. It's, I can only imagine for a kid, a, a, a boy especially, yeah. you know, if I know yeah. as a kid, I had a hard time sitting still, you know, and so yeah. does he. And it, it's it's been an obstacle. Yeah, it, it's, it's so hard for so many students right now. Uh, I, like yourself, was someone who uh, was hard, you know, had a hard time paying attention in class. Uh, and I'm someone who has forgotten a lot of that stuff. I was in a bar not that long ago and someone was like, you know what, I'll buy you two beer if you can do any kind of long division. I didn't, I didn't get those beer, Terry. <laughs> I know, I know. Think about it. I mean, I'm from the day when you actually knew your phone number. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, <laughs> my, you, and you knew everybody's <laughs> phone number. You knew your mom's phone number. You knew your friends. Yeah. You knew every Man, I don't even know my wife's phone. If you ask me my wife's phone number right now, I couldn't tell you. I just know to press the button, <laughs> and there it is. And so you're talking about are we really smarter? 
we more technical, <laughs> but I don't know if we're smarter, actually. <laughs> so, so tell me about Celebrity Substitute. What are you teaching here? Uh, I was teaching art, and it's so awesome. We had a teacher who taught in the, in the Compton area of Los Angeles, and uh, her name was Rachel, and she was the most brilliant teacher. She loved her students, and she, and she loved being with her students. But this, you know, everything with the COVID thing kept her away from them. And I decided to help her with her class and to teach scale and proportion and perspective and kind of give a lesson right there to the class by painting and drawing. Now, this is one thing I do know. And one thing I did not forget is I'm an artist. I had an art scholarship. Uh, that was one of the first things I ever did. Before I played football, really? like I had before a before football, you were you were an artist. Exactly, exactly. Um, and when I first moved to LA, before I started acting, I had my portfolio in at Disney. I thought I may be an animator, and it was at Disney, at DreamWorks, and at different companies. And then all of a sudden, hand drawn animation just went away. So once right. Toy Story came out, everybody was on the computers, and then I ended up acting, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. But the chance to get back to my first love, my craft, my whole thing, and, and, and to be able to teach it to all these kids, it was so much fun. And what was great is that they had an actual student on the Zoom all with us, uh, another young artist who didn't know that I would be the substitute. And it was the best surprise ever. It was like, you know, she's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and it was worth it. It was worth it to, to just give them, all these kids, some some hope and let them know that we care. You know, I, like I said, that's the same thing my son is going through. It's just like talking to a teacher through a screen. You're like, what? You know what I mean? Um, but to have someone that they know and recognize, and she was right. a big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and it was perfect. You know, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. You know, you... They're, the students are in on the Zoom chats, expecting to see their teachers. All of a sudden, Terry Crews shows up, starts teaching them art. It's sort of mind blowing. Is there something you can show us right now, or something like something that you taught them? Something you can show to the audience right now? Oh, we. You know what? I actually sent the pictures to YouTube so they could have them. So I drew. We drew all our stuff, but I don't have anything with me right now. I'm so sorry. I, if I'd have known, I would oh, have had it Oh, that's all right. That's okay, man. To go. <laughs> but I, we, what we did, I, I, I sketched live perspective. It was like a person running and showing how the hands in front are this way big, but the hands in back here are way back here. And it was a really cool lesson. And it was something that most artists don't get right. You know what I mean? And it's so yeah. cool to actually, you know, I love giving secrets away, especially with art. I'm not you know, the magician who tells all the secrets and everybody hates him because he makes it harder for the other guy. <laughs> I'm that guy. Uh, so I love to talk about perspective and art. And, and I, I can give away one thing right now that most people don't know. is when they draw, they have a head and they draw a circle. But the thing is, your eyes are always way up here when you draw them. But your eyes are actually right in the middle of the circle it's an it's so weird and and people as soon as people draw they go my eyes are up here no 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 your eyes are way down on your drawn circle and it's so because your mind makes up things as you see them and so when you watch a kid's eye like just what your eyes did you went hey when you see a kid kind of go whoa and get that <laughs> and understand it it makes it really satisfying and i i love love talking art to, you know teaching art doing this kind of stuff i actually taught a facebook art drawing class uh a couple of years ago at the facebook headquarters for a lot of these super super uh very savvy engineers you know what i mean and it was the most satisfying thing it was amazing are you a tough teacher? Are you an understanding teacher? I, I'm not tough at all. First of all, the whole thing is, the you know, teachers like 
students to compete. And I have never been about that. And I've seen, I've seen people's hearts get broken. I've seen so many problems with schoolwork and competition that it's really has, has killed careers. And I decided, no, you know, what, and it was wild. I'm gonna give you an example. The first time I gave all the Facebook students their uh, pencils and artwork and, and boards and everything. And I said, okay, go ahead and draw the model. Nobody moved. And I was like, why are you, what's going on? And I, what, I run, what I realized was that everyone was competing with everyone else in the class. So they were so scared to actually make a drawing, like to actually move the pencil until someone else did move their pencil. And one thing people have to understand is that all judgment kills creativity. It kills it. As Soon as you start to judge it, you can't make it and it's done. So these guys were trying to judge their painting, their pictures as they did them. And I said, stop, stop, stop. I said, you mm. cannot make a wrong move. Everybody just go for it. You are whatever, the way you see the world is viable and valuable. So go for it. And these guys started to do it. And you should, they started, listen, you're talking about 30 year old geniuses. They were like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. <laughs> they were like four year olds. And by the time they were done, they were amazed at what they created simply because they weren't judging it anymore. And they weren't competing anymore. And that's the thing. I, I'm like, guys, school should be free. It should be fun. It has to have the fun part or you're not gonna do it. But if you can make it fun, this is what I love about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He starts to make these mm. things very, very difficult concepts, totally fun. And it's like, man, you know, I spent three years taking that class and I enjoy when you talk about it for an hour. You know what I mean? That's the difference between the good teachers yeah. and the guys that want you to compete. And my deal was to be a very, very sympathetic, great teacher that just, hey man, let's go have fun. Let's enjoy this. And then, then you'll go out and learn more on your own. Terry, obviously our thoughts are with you right now. Um, you know, in doing research for this, we, you know, we know that your wife underwent a double mastectomy, has a weakened immune system during this time when folks with immune, weakened immune systems are incredibly vulnerable. You know, how does that change your perspective on what we're going through right now? Well, first of all, um, you know, having someone in the house who could really, really be hit hard by this virus, um, it's, it's, it changes the perspective because, you know, uh, a lot of people have been kind of touting the fact that underlying conditions, you know, it's like, well, if you have, if you have that, if you're obese or you have uh, diabetes, if you have asthma and, and we don't have any of those things. So you feel like, oh, well, no problem. Now you go out and do your thing. But it brought it home for me because my wife is recovering. And if I, I mean, what, all I could think about is what if I'm the person who brings that home to her? You know what I mean? And it became a thing where everything ratcheted up and I began to totally, totally empathize to people who are more susceptible to this virus. And again, a lot of the young people and a lot of the people who are, most people have recovered, but there are, you know, the best way I can really put this is like a peanut allergy. And it's the thing where, hey, everybody has peanut sandwiches. It's no big deal. Nah, nah. But there's somebody in that room that could die if they got anywhere near those peanuts. So I say, for the time being, let's put it away and we'll eat your peanut sandwich, a peanut butter sandwich at home. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be good to bring it to school because someone could, could die. And I think that if we see it that way, uh, most people can understand and know that this is not forever, but it's just temporary. You know, that's very, very important. I think that everyone has to see that this is a very temporary thing in the scheme of millions and millions of years of human history. Uh, if this takes a year, then I think it's worth it.
Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, our, th- our thoughts are with you. Our thoughts are with everybody who is immunocompromised right now, and um, but I can't help but notice in between talking about America's Got Talent, between hosting a book club on the internet, uh, doing this celebrity mm-hmm. substitute, and still dealing with this stuff at home, you're able to keep upbeat at a time when a lot of us are struggling with that. Um, a, how do you do it? And I guess are you doing it? <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. Well, you know what? First of all, my wife and I, you know, we're not we're not young. I mean, I I'll be 52 this year, and uh, first of all, we've seen a lot. And I'll be honest, man, we have seen a lot. You know, I'm gonna tell you where I'm from. I'm from Flint, Michigan. Who's it's seen the crack epidemic. It's seen the demise of the auto industry. My wife is from Gary, Indiana. And it's seen both the crack epidemic and the demise of the steel industry. Then we got together and we've had, uh, we've lost homes, we've lost children, we've had major tragedies, we've lost parents. And we start to see, and you start to get a bigger picture. And, but this is the thing with all of this stuff, you start to understand that you need to be more than anything, you need to be grateful. You start to understand it's it's really about what you have. It's not about what you don't. And I like to measure success. I say this all the time, is that uh, the measure of your success is equal to the depth of your gratitude, straight up. You can't truly be successful unless you are thankful. And my thing is, I've seen people who were had everything in the world, but they weren't grateful and all of a sudden they lost it and they were always in a bad place and the whole deal and I was even like that until I started to see what I had I I became more and more thankful my wife right now is cancer free and what I began to thank every what I began to thank the universe for was the fact that she caught it at stage one that she's alive, that she's thriving, that she's cancer free right now. Just imagine if it was stage three or four or even inoperable, Mm -hmm. it could have been that way. Mm -hmm. And I just go, hey man, I'm more grateful than ever. And so instead of looking at it like, oh man, I look at it like, oh wow, thank you. We caught it and we can fight this together. And I think that I've learned over the years to really look at that. And, you know, it's funny because I, I, I bring up the fact that we lost children before, but we've had, we had three more come after that. And you just go, I'm so thankful for my kids. I'm thankful for the one, you know what I mean? It's, it's not a, yeah. it, it's really a way to just really reframe what typical, typically could be a tragedy. Uh, a, a, an anonymous quote that I heard that I love right now, and I use it all the time, is that sometimes your greatest hopes are destroyed to prepare you for something better. Man, I literally live by that right Mm -hmm. now because you all have hopes. We all had, oh yeah, it should be like this. It should be like, I should be here right now. I'm not, you know, I look at the high schoolers. They're not gonna graduate together. You know, they're all separated. They miss their proms, they miss their graduations. They miss all this stuff. But at the same time, I'm looking at like, everybody's gonna remember your class. <laughs> like, no matter what, you guys are gonna be the remembered right. ones. You know what I mean? It's like, right. there's another way to think yeah. about it. Remember that year that wasn't? That's me, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, <laughs> the, imagine what their reunion's gonna be like. You know what I mean? It's like, you're gonna have a one year or two year reunion that's gonna be off the chain. Um, yeah, so my exactly. thing is, you know, Again, man, you can call it, you can call it uh, whatever. Yeah, he's just kind of on this whole Pollyanna woo-woo-woo thing. But I'm telling you right now, it's the truth. I'm not lying. I'm not, it's, I'm not blowing smoke. It's just I decided I it. to look at the best things there and go with the best thing. Well, listen, I really appreciate the perspective today. Our thoughts are with your family. Really appreciate the positivity. If you were my teacher, I would stand up, sit up straight every single day. Uh, (laughs) Thank you so much for dropping by and and take care and stay safe, Terry. Hey, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you.